Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. My YouTube channel is already a few years old and during these years I have collected lots of different photos and video files that I'm no longer able to keep on my main computer because of the size. Right now I do not have any time nor desire upgrading my main computer, that's why I decided that it's finally time to build my own NAS or network attached storage. First of all, I need to address one question, why mini ITX format when micro ATX and ATX are much more cost effective? Well, first of all, I'm very space restricted in my apartment and second, I know that many of you love tiny cute mini ITX devices and it doesn't matter if it's a gaming computer, if it's a workstation or a NAS device as in my case. So you could say that it is also for the sake of YouTube. When I say NAS, I mean storage of data. And what's the most important for your data? According to me, it is stability and security. And that's why I immediately dismissed all the Chinese no-name options that are available on eBay, AliExpress or through other sources. It is also desired but not absolutely necessary to have ECC memory in your NAS. So, after investigating dozens of different offers from eBay and evaluating a new hardware, I picked three different options which were the most interesting for me. First one was Mini ITX Gigabyte MJ11 motherboard with AMD Epic on board, then I also tested Odroid H4 SBC, and finally I have got this Gigabyte B550i Mini ITX motherboard with AMD AM4 socket that can host AMD Ryzen CPUs. Gigabyte B550i is a premium motherboard that cost more than 200 euros, but for this price you get lots of connectivity in a tiny package. You get fully functional PCI Express X16 slot, two M.2 slots for NVMe SSD drives, one of which is PCI Express 4.0, Additionally, you get four SATA 3 ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, Wi Fi and Bluetooth, plethora of USB ports, and what's interesting, the motherboard supports ECC memory. Most of you probably have seen a couple of my X99 related videos where Xeon CPUs on Chinese motherboards can work with ECC and non ECC memory, but Xeon CPUs can work with ECC registered memory, ECC unbuffered memory, and non ECC memory. AMD Ryzen CPUs on AMD AM4 platform can work only with ECC unregistered memory, so the standard ECC rack modules will not work. You need ECC unbuffered or ECC UDIM modules. Unfortunately, these modules are not as popular and often more expensive than ECC reg. You also have a capacity limitation to just two modules, 32 GB each. It is also important to mention that not every Ryzen CPU supports ECC memory. For example, many NAS builders pick Ryzen 5 5600G because it has iGPU, but unfortunately this CPU does not support ECC memory. If you want a Ryzen G series with ECC memory support, you need to buy Pro version, so you would need Ryzen 5 5600G Pro. Luckily for me, non-G series Ryzen's do support ECC memory and I tested with Ryzen 5 5600 non-G. Okay, that's probably enough about ECC memory, let's talk about Gigabyte B550i motherboard and the test results. Unfortunately here I have to disappoint you, I really don't have what to tell about this motherboard because it's just next to perfect. Everything works and everything I would wish for a NAS is there. The motherboard supports ECC and it works in ECC mode. Then of course I have tested all possible connector and everything worked just fine. I have also tested server-like features such as headless boot, wake on LAN, PCI Express buffication and everything worked just fine. For PCI Express buffication I used an AliExpress adapter that splits the PCI Express X16 slot into X8, X4, X4 so you can install an X8 GPU and install two NVMe SSD drives into one PCI Express X16 slot. With a NAS build that is supposed to be always on, it is very important to check the power consumption and Gigabyte B550i also shines here. During idling, without any GPU installed, the entire system consumed about 
3840 watts from the wall. If I add AMD RX 6400 into the system, the power consumption goes roughly 10 watts more, so it will be about 4850 watts of electricity during idling. In one of the recent videos, Level 1 Tech tested a Chinese no-name NAS motherboard with a Ryzen chip on board. They reported that motherboard during idling consumed about 6570 watts, and they said that it was a decent result. So compared to the Chinese option, Gigabyte B550i is 30-40% better. Power specs for this thing are very, very impressive. Out of the box, from the wall, with my 80 plus gold power supply, we're talking like 65-70 watts, before we start adding anything. If you have read the video title, you probably know that I am not going to use B550i for my personal NAS. But if the motherboard is so good and so great, why not? Well, first of all, I don't need all the features of this motherboard, and second is the price. The motherboard costs more than 200 euros plus Ryzen 5 5600, and the combo price goes to about 300-350 euros. On the other side, Odroid H4 costs less than 200 euros and it comes with a CPU on board. Plus, with the Odroid I can use an old Lenovo power brick from a laptop, while with B550i I need to buy an extra SFX power supply, so the price gap grows even further. That's why I made a painful decision and sacrificed ECC memory support and decided to go with Odroid H4 for my personal NAS build. Additionally, Odroid H4 with DDR5 and Intel N97 CPU consume even less power than B550i with Ryzen 5 5600. So my entire NAS, which is equipped with the NVMe SSD and four hard drives under usage, consumes less than 50 watts, which is about the same as idle power consumption of B550i with the Ryzen 5 5600. At the same time, if you have higher requirements for your NAS, for example, you want to add more hard drives or you want to install 10 gig Ethernet adapter, then I can absolutely recommend Gigabyte B550i. It has it all and it does it well. The final few words of this video I would like to dedicate to my NAS chassis. First of all, I looked at the Jones Bo N4, which is a very attractive and rather high quality chassis. Unfortunately, though, it costs about 150 euros here in Sweden. Then I evaluated the Maker Unit 6 bay 3D printable NAS chassis, but unfortunately, even though it looks pretty attractive and the assembly is rather complicated with magnets and heated inserts, the final result is not very stable and for me that's a deal breaker, so I settled with the mod case mass option. Mod case mass is also 3D printable, but it is much stronger and much stiffer. At the same time, the assembly is much simpler. You don't need magnets, you don't need heated inserts, you just need self-typing screws for wood. Even though the free version has only 4 spaces for HDD drives, that's just enough for me. And all in all, I'm very happy with my NAS build and I really love this tiny chassis. I use my NAS daily for YouTube video library, but also for Wi-Fi uploads from my phone. For the future upgrades, I probably need to buy a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch and maybe increase the memory capacity for ZFS cache. Right now I have only 32 gigs, but 48 or 64 gigs might be possible with this Odroid H4 motherboard. With this I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and good luck building your personal NAS.